Hey there everyone, thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Alright, today we're going to be talking about Into the Heartless Woods by Joanna Ruth Mayer. This was the Book of the Month winner of January. Sorry, I keep, like, I forgot it was February for a reason. <laughs> but this was January's Book of the Month winner on SinsWorkshop.com, courtesy of your votes. Please don't forget to go vote right now for March's Book of the Month. Um, books do get a featured book review. <laughs> so, in any case, I have to say I'm a huge fan of Mayer at this point. Um, her previous book that I read, Beyond the Shadowed Earth, also won the Book of the Month title last year. And I have to say I'm really impressed with her writing style. This one is... The other book reminded me a lot of, um, you know, the Lord of the Rings series in a way. I felt like it had that sort of atmosphere to it. This has a little bit more of a fairy tale aspect, in my personal opinion. <clears throat> so, I love this. Once again, you know, when I have a book, I'm going to try to read you guys the first line. Um, and it's prologue, monster. I have to say, I love the detailing with the chapter heading because they do change. Um, because the monster, she doesn't want to be a monster anymore. So, the first here. I will, I will, you know, read the prologue for you a little bit. Um, just not all of it, just a little bit. I was born a tree. It was easier then. All I needed was the earth and the wind and the rain. All I needed was the sunlight warm in my dappled leaves. There was no fear, just growth. No wanting, just sky. No thirst, thirst, thirst. Only starlight. Isn't that such a wonderful first paragraph? I was just immediately captivated by this story because, I mean, it's titled Monster. So this monster was born a tree. So Gwened, I hope that's how you pronounce her. That's how I was pronouncing it. So... It continues, but my mother wanted daughters, and she chose the birch ring. I remember the day of my birth, the stretch of wood becoming sinew, the leaves becoming hair. I felt the dirt under my toes, and I opened my eyes for the first time and saw what I had never seen before. The deep green wood and the wide blue sky, the gray and white forms of my seven sisters. She's the youngest. And it ends, you know, the prologue ends. I forgot I had never been anything but my mother's youngest monster. And then we enter part one. Leaves. And then we're talking about Owen. So he's our other protagonist in this story. Owen. Once again, you see the beautiful character art because he's the son of an astronomer. He actually wants to be an astronomer himself. And I think that that's really interesting. You know, I really do like... I'm more of a night person myself. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a morning person. You know, I try, try, try as I might to wake up early so that I can get more work done. So that when my son wakes up, I have more time to spend with him. But I am just not having it. I am not a morning person. And so I really connected to Owen in the way that he loves the stars and the night, and how he loves to study the stars alongside his father. So the woods. They're pretty much haunted by these tree sirens. The monster, you know, she has sisters. And the goal is they collect souls for their mother because she wants to wage war against the soul eater. It's a lot of storytelling, and I don't want to ruin it for you because I thought it was just such a beautiful read. This tree, this monster who... Owen named Sarah, and, you know, they form a really beautiful bond, and she also starts to find her humanity, you know, she doesn't want to be her mother's monster anymore, and I really do think that that's really powerful, and I think we connect, I think readers are going to connect to it, because our parents always have these ideas for us, um, of what we should be, 
in life or how we should be in life. And I really respect the parents out there who let their children explore who they want to be and what they want to do with their lives. I mean, I, as of right now, I really don't care what my son does with his life. He could be a drag queen. He could change his identity. It doesn't matter to me what he does as long as he's happy. Because his happiness, I've discovered, is when he's sad, I, I, I'm I angry at why he's sad. Um... And I just, I just want my son to be happy. That's all I care about, you know? And I think along the way, some parents kind of lose sight of that. They, we inherently have this need to protect our children. And that's what the, what that's kind of what Gwen wants to do. Sorry, my cat just knocked down something. <laughs> that's what Gwen wants to do, um, but she's lost sight of it in a way. She's so embittered. Um, she's very angry. I mean, her something precious was stolen from her, so she wants to just destroy the world and turn it into woods. And I, I get that, um, but she's going about it the whole the wrong way because her soul was stolen from her. I mean, what it what are we without our soul? You know, it's a really thoughtful and and compassionate story about finding um, your humanity, finding your soul, what it means to have a soul. Saren is a monster. She has a heart, but she doesn't have a soul. And I think we question that a lot of the time along with Owen as we're reading the story because it's like, you've done this and this and this. How can you say you don't have a soul? She does a lot of good, but she also does a lot of bad against her will. Her mother does control her. Again, her mother is very embittered very angry, very vengeful. Her mother is not a good person. Um, it's really the embodiment of a toxic mother-daughter relationship. And I thought it was very powerful how it was written. You know, it's it really makes you think about what it means to be a good parent, what it means to be a bad parent, um, what a toxic relationship between a parent and a child looks like. And I really do like stories that are thoughtful in that way. Whether or not it was the author's intent to highlight something like this is regardless, that was my interpretation. I always say this with books are a form of art and they are up to the interpretation of the reader. That is how I interpreted it. Maybe you won't interpret it the same way as I do, but I thought it was really profound. I think it lends this, I think it gives the story a lot of depth. And I really did think it was just wonderfully written. And I like how we go back and forth between Owen and Saren. I love the tension between their relationship because she's a tree siren. And as a siren, she lures men to their death. Or not just men, it could be anyone. Um, lure anyone to their death to collect their soul for their mother. So... I think it was really thought out how she brings about this tension because Saren saves Owen and they form a friendship. He, she saves Owen, she saves Owen's little sister, but again, you know, she's done a lot of bad. Again, she's a tree siren for all her life. She's been raised to be a monster and she doesn't want to be a monster. And I think it was just very, imp not empowering, it was very captivating, that's the word, captivating to read the relationship, to see the tension, to see the secrets that linger between them, the things that they don't want to speak about because they care about each other. But what kind of a relationship or friendship is that if you can't be honest with the other person? So I do like how they move around each other. I do like how they develop and I do like how the story develops as well. It has a very steady pace. The ending was just mind-blowing. I thought it was so well written. It was executed perfectly. I liked how the author also captures um, the passage of time. She doesn't linger on a lot of detail. She shows you what you need to know to know that time is passing. That's it. 
And I like that. She doesn't linger on expressing, oh, this how much time has passed, this much time has passed, this much time has passed. That kind of, in my opinion, when authors do that, they slow down the pacing of the story. I can understand it from time to time, but it's not my favorite thing. Um, I think there are better ways to showcase the passage of time, and I think Mayer does that. I think when, oh god, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but when Saren is looking for Owen later on in the book, a lot of things happen. A lot happens. And the timelines between these two perspectives, they kind of diverge a little bit, but then they are brought back together. And I like how we can see the events taking place near the end of the book simultaneously between both perspectives. I think they are very cohesive. They don't break up the pacing. In fact, they create a fast-paced story. So you're seeing the story from both of these perspectives near the ending. You're seeing these events just swirl together, but you're not lost. You know, it's very easy to follow and you get lost in the story because you're just like reading. I mean, I halfway past the book, halfway through the book, I didn't want to put it down. I would just like pick it up whenever I had a chance at work. I'm just like, the GM's not here. Let me read. Um, in the car, I'm like, let me read. <laughs> My son's asleep. Let me read. That was me. I was just so captivated by the story. I didn't want to put it down. So when a story makes me so eager to read it, to see what's going to happen next, you all, autom I automatically know I'm in love. I'm in love with the story. And I was just blown. I, I mean, it really does a good job of characterization. It really does a good job of writing the story. And I do like how it does a different writing structure as well. When Owen's talking, it's, you know, traditional, traditional verse. I mean, traditional prose here. That's, but the monster, her, her perspective is written, again, she's a tree, she's a, she's a siren. So she sings. And this is a better example. Her story is written a lot like you would read lyrics to a song. They look, it looks like verse. And I thought that that was really captivating. Um, my husband's like, was your book published? I'm like, no, this is intentional. And I love it when things like this are intentional and they make sense to the reader. I thought it was just another added um, tidbit. You know, it's not distracting. It flows. It keeps the momentum up. Mayer did a really good job with this story. And I'm so happy it won the book of the month because I... I really wanted to read this book and I loved it. It was good. It was good. Um, so on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and give this book four and a half out of five stars. Not quite five. Didn't just blow me away. But honestly, at the end of the day, I absolutely loved it. I really, really did. I really do think that this is definitely a story worth reading. Um, and I want to once again thank the publisher, Page Street, um, Page, what, what was it? Page, oh, it's just Page Street Publishing Company. That was Page Street Kids for some reason, I don't know. But I want to go ahead and thank them for gifting me a copy of this book after it won uh, the book of the month. Because, you know, I went, emailed them like, hey, your book won the book of the month. Can I get a free copy? And they're like, sure, here you go. So thank you so much for that. I'm so happy I got to read this book. Highly recommend it to everyone, especially if you really like um, fairy tale like stories. And that end, ooh, that ending, it was just so, I was just like, oh, it like touched my heart very, very thoughtfully. So, once again, I'm going to go ahead and give this book four stars. I will include a link in the description below to purchase the book if you are interested. Uh, if money's tight or if you're just like, eh, which I, completely understand. Please check out this book from your local library. It definitely deserves to be read and please remember to support the author by writing your own review for it, sharing it with your friends, and purchasing the book if you are able to. On that note, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and share it with all your book-loving friends. On that note,
Have a great rest of your day and happy reading, everyone.